In the second part of this video, we can now focus on how to make the buttons and I will show you some interesting uh, tips and tools how to quickly explore some design ideas and patterns. Last class I also mentioned whenever you try to learn digital surfacing and you look at reference objects, don't look at the details. Try to see the geometrical basical or basic uh, primitives inside products and use those primitives as your building blocks to sculpt your details into. So for example, for the upper part of my remote control, somewhere here, there I would like to have a set of keys that have a cylindrical shape and the top parts, so the area your finger would touch, has a slight concave dipped in surface. Now basically the two geometrical objects are a cylinder and a sphere, but I can actually in this case start with a sphere. So uh, as you can see, I have my 3D cursor positioned. I press Shift A, Add Mesh Sphere, and I press T. And you can see here I have segments and rings and size. Let me quickly repeat what, for example, segments mean. So if I press 3 and I go into top view, you see segments means like from the center, how many segments. Does that sphere have? And rings is actually from a side, how many rings horizontally. So basically segments means vertical and rings horizontal subdivision of a sphere. And for this type of modeling, we're doing having alias later at S the goal to go into, I can work with something like 16 and 16 segments. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so in a side view or front view, I can go into edit mode and scale this one down. Make sure that when you do it, you have the bonding box set and not the 3D cursor. Otherwise, something like this might happen. So when you sphere, when you scale goes to the 3D cursor, then the 3D cursor is active as your input. And again, you can switch between 3D cursor and bonding box by simply pressing comma and period on your keyboard. And maybe let's put this one to here. Shift D, move it over, Shift D, move it over. Let's try to get an idea if those buttons have a good proportions or relationship to the remote. And that looks somewhat satisfactory. Okay, let's move this up for a second. Now I can go into edit mode, press S and Z and scale the sphere along the Z axis and make it flat because all I'm looking for is simply this lower section of my geometry. That's, for example, what would be inside the button. That means I can select everything on top, press X and select delete vertices and just remove that geometry. Then by holding the Alt key and then clicking on this edge, you can see I can select complete loops or lines. And then in top view, I can press E to extrude, press S to scale, move it slightly outwards, and then E, and then I have to press Z to just move it straight down. So there's kind of like my, my basic building block for my button. I can add a subdivision surface modifier, maybe add another loop cut here, and then I would like the object to look soft, so I click smooth, uh, smooth shading while I'm in object mode. 
if you're uh, in edit mode, you have to select all the vertices or faces you would like to shade accordingly, and then you can do it. If you have nothing selected and you click it, nothing happens. But I have an object selected, or here I have those faces selected, and you see that only now those faces are soft. Okay, then maybe we can change the pivot point. So I alt click on this lower loop, go into object mode, press T, go to origin, and say origin to 3D cursor. And you notice that this, oh, uh, I forgot something. Of course, I have to set my 3D cursor. And you see where the 3D cursor was? There's a small dot. That's basically your object center. And I will, in a minute, explain to you what this means. But if I press R or S, you see that everything is in relationship to this object center. So if I press S now, you see everything scales to that object center or rotates around it. Let's sync this down a little bit. Okay. Now let's take a look at what this object center is for. Everybody who knows, for example, how to use Illustrator or InDesign knows how to draw a text box and then type text in. Think about this 3D object as a container, a placement in 3D space, like a text box. And the mesh, whatever you put in, that's just your text. And we can also name, for example, this key. So if you go to the object property, looks like a cube, it says sphere. Maybe here we just write in center button. And then there's a triangle, if you click on it, maybe you can call this master button. So you have a, a cube and a triangle. This actually where the triangle is, that means that it represents the information for the wire mesh, your model. Where you have the cube, this object, that means basically a marker in space where that wire mesh is being displayed. For example, all your transformation for location, rotation, and scale in object mode applies to this object, but not to the mesh modeling. If I go into edit mode, everything I do here is basically stored inside information for the Y mesh master button. Now this sounds very complicated, but let me show you something that probably will illustrate it much better. With this button selected, if you press object, you see it says duplicate objects and duplicate linked. Think about duplicate objects really like a copy and duplicate linked more like a clone or an instance. And the key, key commands for to copy is shift D and the key command to make a clone is alt D. And you see if I click on this object, it says master button 0 0.001. If I click on my original button and the clone, you see they both actually say master button and there's a two because that means, I know there are three. Those three buttons are clones. They're all, as you can see by the name, different objects. 
like this one. But those three buttons all use the same geometry for the button to be displayed. So what does that mean? So let's say, for example, here, I move something out. Happens only there. Now if I go to here, to this clone, and I change my clone, and I leave edit mode, you see all the other clones represent that change as well. And you see it doesn't really matter which object I go to to, to modify because those three objects all use the same geometry input. So where can that, for example, be very helpful for us in our design process? Well, for example, with the, the buttons, I mean, this should be the master button, and I make an array of different buttons. Then if I want to change the geometry and explore more styling, if I have six buttons, I would have to work on six buttons at once, step or one after the next one. And with cloning, I just work on one button and then all the designs will be updated. So let's try to do this. I would like to make six copies of these buttons on a radial array around it. So step one, I select my, my master button, shift S, snap my 3D cursor to the selected, okay. Then I press Alt D, maybe X and move it out a little bit. Maybe like this, okay. I also make sure my pivot point is set to the 3D cursor. And then I can click Alt D to make another clone or to rotate. And then I can type in the amount of rotation I need. No one full turn is 360 degrees. I would like to have six buttons, so that's 60. So Alt D R 60, Alt D R 60, Alt D R 60. Okay. Now if I go to any button and for example, change the design a little bit, you can see now that I can quite nicely explore styling of that button. And every time when I leave edit, uh, edit mode, go into object mode, the change is updated to all other clones because they are all, again, they're linked. So that's, for example, what you can make use of linked and duplicated objects. Now let's take a look at how we can quickly maybe create a nice array of buttons that go along a linear path. So maybe I select this point, position my marker, shift A, add a cube, go into edit mode and then I scale this cube down with S. I'm just deleting this face because I don't really need it. And I sculpt this a little bit. Okay. Maybe let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And right now it's a very bubble like design. That's not really what I want. Maybe let's add some more loop cuts so the button gets a little bit rounder and maybe here I can dip those down a little bit so also there I can create a slightly concave surface and maybe those can scale apart a little bit so the buttons have an interesting curvature okay good
Now I would like to have a certain amount of buttons. I don't really know how many fit in there. So I could go to add modifier in object mode. And then I add an array modifier. And what the array modifier is doing, it gives you the ability to have a certain amount of repetition, so 10. And then you have, for example, the ability to work with an offset. So you see that with one, that means you see that one object is really put next to the next object. So they're touching each other. If I point, point 0.5, that means half of the object width is being used to for the repetition. So they intersect each other by half. If I say two, I basically have the space of a complete object in between. So like one button would fit in between. And I can change those values numerically quite nicely. Okay. Nice part is also with the array modifier. If, for example, I scale this, it updates then everything for me. Okay. Now press maybe Control, uh, sorry, Alt D, and then Y, and I move this object a little bit up. Kind of like maybe, maybe till there. Now I would like this object to be moved over to the right side, and there are two ways how we can do this. So if I open my property panels, I see, for example, X, Y, and Z where on Y this array is actually positioned. So I could click into it and then Control C or Apple C, copy it, select this one, Alt D, so I make another clone, Y, move it over, and then I can put in the value with control V or Apple V, but it's not there. That's because my clone or my copy uses the same position as the object I copied that information from, and that's actually positive space. So I can go to the location for Y, type in a minus, and then it flips it over. So you see like this is minus negative space, that's along the x-axis, and then that's y positive space, and y negative space. Kind of like your 2D system where everything up here is positive, everything down here is negative. So that's one way how we can do it. Another way would be I select this object because that's my center, say shift s cursor to select it, set my 3D cursor, as the input, select this object, press Alt D, enter. I made a copy or a clone, but I didn't move it. And then I can mirror it over. I can press Control M, and then I use the Y axis and press enter. So here, let me do this again. Alt D, escape, Control M, and then I select Y as my mirror axis. And that basically concludes kind of like some basic modeling uh, and uh, like thinking approaches for how to use subdivision surface modeling and like the mirror modifier, the array modifier, and the 3D cursor, and then clay sculpting or some like an alias, I call it like alias sculptors or digital sculpting. Uh, so with working with the 
polygon topology and the subdivision surface modifier to then sculpt like really nice fluid looking surfaces.